Alright, let's take a left hand turn to use that stick to the left. See if we'll roll to the left. You get the angle of bank that you want. You bring the stick back to neutral. Perfect. Now glance that little black ball on your instrument panel. You see how that ball is right in the middle? Yep. You don't have to use any left rudder and that ball is in the middle. And that tells you that's a perfect turn for your left. Let's go ahead and roll those links back to level. So you use that stick to the right. She rolls back to the right. Good. Let's try right hand turn. Same deal. Shallow angle of bank. She rolls to the right. Stick back to neutral. Now look at that little ball. See how that falls out to the right? Yep. So push forward on that right rudder pedal. There you go. That's how you fly sterling. Let's go ahead and roll the wings back to level here. Now let's make a left hand turn. So you can see how, how uh, light the ailerons are. And most people when they start flying this airplane, they're really surprised by that. Good. The airspeed right now is about 75 miles an hour, and that's perfect. Now where we want to go here today, let's take another left hand turn. We want to go out this direction here. You see that grassy area out there? Yeah. If you look out, there's like a big old golf course. It, there's nothing but grass up there. It is extremely safe. It's a great place for us to fly, much unlike the Boston area where you guys have nothing but trees up there. So I want you to keep heading on down this way for now. We're at, uh, coming up on 800 feet. We're going to continue climbing. We're going to go on up to about uh, 1,500 feet here today. This is going to be something you're never going to forget, and that's a pretty strong statement right there. Now, a lot of the maneuvers that you're going to be doing today are called ground reference maneuvers. Now, I'm looking at you right now, and you're looking all over the place, and that's a great thing for you to do. But by just like by looking over the side of the airplane, uh, you're going to be able to see which direction we're flying. Uh, for example, up ahead of us about another half a mile, you're going to fly over the top of the road. And that road is the north-south road. Okay, so what I want you to do is cross over that road and then make a right-hand turn and follow that road up to the north. You'll see it right down here below you here shortly. See it there? Good. Yep. The uh, Orlando airspace, believe it or not, actually comes this far out of the airport and touches that road. So we're going to stay uh, to the uh, west of that road here today. There's that road now about an eighth of a mile ahead of you. Oh, good. Now, on this right hand turn, you're going to be using a little right aileron, a little right rudder, and a little tiny bit of up elevator, all three controls at the same time. There's that road. Let's make this right hand turn. There you go. That's a good aileron. A little right rudder. And you're looking over the side, looking good. And now we're heading to the north. Let's go ahead and roll these wings back to level here. Nice. Now, Rick, look over your left shoulder here. You see there's a fence line or a tree line right there? Yeah. That's east and west. Let's take a shallow left-hand turn. Now, let's head towards Tampa. So, you use that stick to the left. She will roll to the left. You get the angle of bank that you want. Stick back to neutral. Very nice. And bring that nose up just slightly. There you go. Now, let me ask you this. 
it. Your apprehension may not totally be gone, but I bet you feel a lot better right now than you did about five minutes ago. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Bring that nose up a little bit more. Right now your airspeed's at 90. We want that airspeed at about 75. That'll give you your best rate of flight speed. There you go. Just hold it there. And I'm looking around the sky. The cool thing is, there's no one up here but you and me. In fact, if you look over here off your left, it's a little hazy, but if you look on the horizon, you can see downtown Tampa right there. You see the building sticking up? Yep, sure can. We're coming up on 1,300 feet to keep on climbing. Beautiful. Now, what we'll do here at 1,500 feet, I want you at that point to lower the nose to what you think is level flight. And once you do that, we're going to go into a series of turns. Now, coming up here, you were doing some nice shallow 20 degree angle bank turns. We want to push your boundaries a little bit, keep you comfortable, but we want, we're going to go a little steeper to about 30 degrees, which is only adding 10 degree angle bank. This is good right here. We're at 1,400 feet. That's plenty high. I'm going to bring the fire back here. All right. Let's try that. Let's do a 180 degree turn to your left. So that 45 degree, that's about 30 right there. Good. Stick back to neutral and around you go. Now if you look over the side of the airplane, you see there's a fence line right down there. This is 90 degrees. That's a 180. We'll just keep it going around until it heads back towards Orlando. There's another one right here. You can see that fence line right there. They're all over the place. It's really good because it keeps your attention outside the airplane. Perfect. We're heading back towards Orlando. Let's try one to the right. Same thing. Perfect. Nice. Turn around you go. And you can look right here. There's your section line. This is 90 degrees. You can see there's like a crosshairs right there. That's the east and west, north and south. Let's see if we're going to the right, so we're heading back this way. Good. Rick, how you feeling? Is it all good? I'm feeling pretty good right now. Right. I want you to look straight ahead of the windscreen. Look at those wires. We talked about those wires on the ground. I'm going to push you a little bit more. Okay. I want you to put that left wire up there parallel with the horizon and a little bit above the horizon. And that will be a level turn in the sky. Let's try one to the left. So this is about another 10 degrees more than what you did before. Let's try one. So let's go to the left. 360 to the left. Good. Now, any time that wire falls below the horizon, you're heading downhill. So bring that nose up a little bit. Get that wire back above the horizon. Come back to on. Good. There you go. We're going to do a 360 right here. You're at a 180, which is right here. This is 270 right here. And by the way, this is that what you're doing right here. This is on your private pilot check ride. So to get your private pilot license, this is one of the things you have to do. Good. Let's try one to the right. Now the only difference here is you have to use a little bit of right rudder. All right. Right hand line, right rudder, a little up elevator. Oh, beautiful. Around you go. And we'll call this 180. So basically when you're flying back towards the sun, that's when you roll out. You can see our intersection line right here. See this field right down below you? Yep. Two weeks ago, I was actually uh, doing an event there. I was landing the plane in that farmer's field, like the old barn shepherds used to do. Nice. Cool. You don't need a uh, runway to have fun. And actually, you know what? Let's keep, let's keep going to the right so you're not looking at the sun. But basically, you're, you're now the king of the turn. I can't teach you anything more on how to turn an airplane. It's really, really simple, and you're doing a great job. The apprehensiveness you had a while ago should be now just about totally gone, because you now know how easy this airplane is to fly. And she's a sweetheart. Cool. All right, the next one over is the Lazy Ace. These are a lot of fun, because we're going to add some more. We're going to do some turns, but now we're going to add some pitch changes at the same time. So we're going to do one to the left here together, all right? So just kind of feel what I do. All right. Here's a shallow angle of bank. That's about what, 10 degrees? That's about 10. We gently bring the nose on up. Freeze the stick right here. Hold it like it's in concrete. Don't put the stick. Don't put your feet. Look over your left shoulder. Isn't that cool? They call these lazy. Look how slow this thing is over the top. Downhill she comes. We haven't done anything. But we will right here. All we have to do is roll it back to the right and bring the nose on up. And you're now going the other direction. That's a 180 degree turn with a 
with a bit of tension involved. Did you like that? Yeah, that was fun. Cool. Let's have you do one. I'll coach you. All right. Let's try one to the left. So a shallow angle of bank to the left. Perfect, right there. Now come on back on the stick. Come on back as deep as you're comfortable with. Freeze it right there. And then look over your left shoulder and enjoy the view. Downhill you come. If you listen until you'll hear it speed up, start rolling it to the right and bring the nose up. Come on back. And we're down below a thousand, so we're going about 110. So we'll bring the nose on up and we'll head on back up above a thousand feet. Cool. Did you hear the airplane slow down and speed up? I sure did. Cool. Yeah. So you're learning how to fly by not uh, by using your, your senses rather than lo using an instrument. Now let's try one of these to the right. The only difference is you have to use a little bit of right rudder pedal pressure over the top. Let's try one. Shallow angle of bank. Bring, it, bring the nose on up. Come on back. Come on back. Come on back some more. Good. Now hold the stick right there. Push on that right rudder. Good. Start rolling it to the left and bring that nose on up. Perfect. Nice. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. Hanging upside down by seatbelt is not my idea of having fun. <laughs> but these lazy ace are fun because, you know, they're really slow, they're very docile, they're very predictable, and you're always sitting 100% in your seat. Yep. Okay. Now what we want to do is one to the left, followed by one to the right, no stopping in between the two. So don't think about doing the whole thing, just do one at a time, just like you finished up. Let's try one to the left, so shallow angle of bank, and bring that nose on up. There you go, come on back on the stick. Come on back some more, come on back some more. Good, hold it right there. Up you go. Beautiful, gravity will pull the nose through the horizon. There, down here we fly, start rolling it to the right, and bring the nose up. Come on back on the stick now, roll right on through, 10 degrees to the right. Come on back, come on back, come on back some more, come on back some more. Good, hold it right there, little right rudder. And we'll roll it back to the left and we'll break the nose up. And that is a lazy egg. All by yourself. Cool. I've done them standing on the ground, but that's the first one in the air. I enjoyed that. <laughs> Let's make a left-hand turn. Let's go back towards the east. We'll get away from the sun. What do you think? Does this thing fly like you thought it was going to fly? Is it better? Is it worse? This, this flies almost uh, like it reads your mind. Yeah. This, you got to remember, again, I always come back to the whole thing that I started with. 18-year-old kid. You know, at 18, you could easily fly this airplane. Now let's go right down, right to 700 feet. Let's go up a little higher. I'll give you some power here. So keep it about 75 to 80 miles an hour. We'll climb back up to above 1,000. Good. So you've done the shallow turn. You've done the uh, steep turn. You've done the lazy eight. My personal favorite. Only one less, uh, one more thing to do here is the slow flight, which is kind of a cool thing. I took a gentleman flying yesterday, and he didn't, he wasn't so sure about doing the stalls. Yeah. But after we did the first one, he just started smiling, and we ended up doing like five or six of them. <laughs> it's that docile because you know it's it, it's just a great airplane, especially on a day like today. Good, we'll just keep on climbing on up. Going great. I'm checking the skies. I don't see anybody up here at all. There we go. So here's what I'd like you to do. Reach over with your left hand and put it on the throttle. I want you to gently bring the throttle back to uh, 1,300 RPM to do it really slow. There you go. So I'm having you multitask. you got to keep flying, but then now you're bringing the power back. Come on back some more. That's 1,600 right about there. Basically, when that needle is pointing up at number three, that's 1,300. There's the shutter. There you go. Now, good. Now, go ahead and lower the nose for me. And lower the nose some more. Put it into a shallow dive. Tell me when you can hear the whistle of the wind and the wires. You hear that? Yep. All right. Now, bring the airplane back to level flight. Don't look at your airspeed. Level flight right there. Now, listen to it. She's going to start talking to you. Bring the nose up a little bit more. Come on back some more. You hear it slowing down? Yep. Come on back some more. You're going to start feeling the stick shake here in a little bit. Good. Come on back some more. Yep. Now here's the stall right. You're going to feel it right here. It's going to say, I can't go any slower. 
So if you won't roll my nose, I will do it for you. And that's it. Look at your airspeed. You're, you're going to 80. The airplane flies at 55. Bring the airplane back to level flight, and away you go. Not a big deal at all. No, that was very nice. Yeah, very nice. So we, uh, we can remember that if it had uh, bad song, song characteristics, it wouldn't have been a good trainer. And this was a great trainer. And that is the basics of flight. Up and down, left and right, fast and slow. Let's make a uh, 180 degree turn, left or right, your choice. Right now we're at about 800 feet, and uh, this is your opportunity here, Rick, to have some fun. So if you want to do some more turns, you can do that. You want to do some more lazy A's. If you want to just fly it around, that's fine as well. But you can see, I bet you like this more than the 172. Oh, in a big way. <laughs> it's, uh... It's nothing like a 172. I was really kind of worried about the open cockpit thing, but you know what? I'll take this over a 172 any day of the week. Yeah. Yeah, you know, everybody likes the convertible down here in Florida. I mean, this is cool. Right now you're flying at, what, 90 miles an hour. So you want 90 miles an hour, and that, that stuff doesn't happen at 90 miles an hour. It's really, really slow. So you can mentally keep up with this thing, which is, again, why it's a good trainer. Right. What would you like to try? Uh, let me try one of the uh, lazy uh, eights. Of the lazy eights. Well, let me look behind you. You're good, so let's try one. Shallow angle of bank. Lay that nose on up to see if you're comfortable with. Come back a little bit more. Yeah, you get the nose up there. Hold it right there. Up you go. She slows down. Gravity pulls the nose. Do it right up there. Downhill she comes. Start rolling it to the left. And do the same thing to the right. I'm oh, sorry, sorry, rolling to the right. Do the same thing to the right. There you go. Shallow angle bank. Bring it on up. Good. Up you go, add a little bit of right rudder pedal. That's nice, that's your best one yet. Look how steep that is, beautiful. Roll to the left, bring it on up. Throw that G-force. Yep, feels good. Let's try another one, let's go back to the left. I could do these all day. The first time I uh, went in, uh, in my first steerman ride around, I was like 16 or so. The guy did a loop, I didn't like that. He did a roll, I didn't like that. He did a lazy eight, I like that. I'm like, now that's more my style. I like, I don't like to hang upside down. Beautiful. Now, I'm going to give you an aerodynamic lesson here today, Rick. If you look, um, look down, and let me see it now. If you look between the ribs on the bottom wing, when the airplane is level flight, you can actually see the, the fabric being kind of sucked up. You see it kind of puffed up. Yep. If you look on the bottom of the upper wing, you can see the fabric being pushed up. So you can actually see the vacuum of lift happening now right here. Whereas on a metal airplane, you don't see that. Ooh. Another thing that you're doing right now, how often do you have the opportunity to fly an open cockpit biplane around at 500 feet above the ground like this? And it's beautiful. Beautiful doing this. Our European guests that come and fly this in, this is their favorite part of the flight. Because over in Europe, you can't do this. Oh, really? I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, here, our rule is, by the FAA, is you have to stay 500 feet away from, it, from any person or thing, like piece of property. Right. House or what have you. You can see down below us, there's nothing. So if you wanted, uh, it's certainly legal to go down if you wanted to fly around at 100 feet. Uh, it's legal to do that, whereas in Europe it is not. Maybe not the smartest thing, however, where we're flying right now, if you ever had an engine issue, uh, even at a low altitude, you know, pick your spot, you should be able to find an open field at 360 degrees. Nice job. Now, back in World War II, you would have been expected to solo this airplane in between 8 and 12 hours of instruction. Now, if you did not do that, they gave you two more hours of remedial instruction. If you still were not able to solo it, you're out. Uh, because everybody can learn how to fly an airplane. Um, but some people, it takes a little bit longer. I think you're doing great. How'd you, what do you 
think about that stall? Were you surprised how nice that was? Yeah, I was very surprised. It was very docile. Uh, 172 doesn't stall that clean. No. Usually a 172 drops a wing. And when it drops that wing the first time, you're looking for something to hold on to, and that scared the crud out of you. And generally, when you get scared, you don't want to do that again. This airplane, not a big deal. In fact, uh, let's, let's go up and do one more. Let's do it. I'll tell you, I'm going to push your batteries. I'm going to, I'm going to have you do two more different types of stalls. This is kind of a cool thing. Uh, right now, the sun's behind us, so this is a nice little camera angle. We're going to do a power on stall. And so basically, we're, this, we're, we're going to simulate a stall that you would do if you pulled the nose up too steep low, low to the ground. So at about 800 feet, that's fine. Just bring that nose on up. Watch what this thing does when it stalls. Hold it right there. Look out your left shoulder. Look how steep you are going up. Whoa. The airplane's going to return to level flight. Here's the stall right here. And the nose comes right back on up. Not a big deal, huh? Not at all. Let's take a right hand turn. I'll go back to the south of this road. Now, i got one more thing I want to show you here. And it's how to uh, learn how to fly an airplane by using your sense of smell. Sense of smell. We're going to do a power off stall. We're going to bring the power back. And right above the stall on this one, it gets really, really quiet because it's, there's no noise of the engine. But right above the stall, you start smelling exhaust fumes coming into the cockpit. So go ahead and reach over with your left hand and bring that power on back. Come on back some more. Come on back some more. Come on back. Come on back. All oh, I want you to bring it all the way back to the stop. Good. This is cool. You'll like this. Now start bringing the nose on up. Listen to the whistle. And tell me when you smell the, the exhaust. I smell it. Smell it. Come on back some more. You get it. Really smell it right about here. There's a stall right there. You smell the exhaust? Yeah, it's no sure big do. deal. And away you go. So people say, well, how does that help me as a pilot? Well, let's say I was teaching you how to land the airplane. And you start flaring the airplane, you start smelling exhaust steam. Well, guess what? If you're getting close to stall, then you need to be just about on the ground. And that's the basics of an airplane. Now, you have absolutely no apprehension right now in this airplane. You're totally comfortable. You're looking around, uh, much unlike when you were on the ground with it. And I appreciate you being honest with me because you should be a little apprehensive when you never flunk something like this. Now, let's, uh, let's talk about your uh, situational awareness. Do you have any idea where you're at right now? Uh, if my guess is right, I should be roughly aimed right back towards fantasy flight. Perfect. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to give you some more power. We're going to go back up a little higher here. So maintain that airspeed of 75 miles an hour to 80. That's just the best climb speed. And we'll go ahead on back up to about 800 feet. Great job. So basically, to learn how to fly an airplane, you do a lot of the stuff that we've done today in the Cessna. Uh, and yep. then you do nothing but take off the landing to learn how to do that. And then you're there. Now, I tell a lot of my uh, uh, the folks that fly the airplane this. We're, it's a lot of money to learn how to fly, you know, maybe realistically $10,000 deal, which is a lot of money to spend. However, when you put it into perspective, anywhere else in the world, like if you were if you were living in London and you want to learn how to fly, how about try twenty five thousand dollars learn how to fly? It's it's way more expensive everywhere in the world but here. So at least we can still do it. And of course, it's very very regulated everywhere else but here. All right, there's fantasy of flight. Now on your left, that's a prison. Look on your right. You see it up here? Yep. All right. We're here coming up on 800 feet. We'll get to 800 feet. We'll level out there. Right down below you to your right, you're going to see a uh, little grass airport right down there. See that little grass strip? Yeah. You can actually land there and taxi up to your house. Good to be the king. Yeah, no, we <laughs> Yeah, if I lived there, my wife would have a hard time uh, making me live or uh, leave there. I would be flying my plane and then living in my house and never going anywhere. All right, so here's the next thing I'm going to have you do. I'm going to have you fly the pattern to land. All right. Now, we did those 30 degree angle of bank turns for a reason. And the reason is, the last thing you want to do in a pattern is crank in like a 60 degree angle of bank turn. Because as you know from your uh, RCs, the steeper your angle of bank, the higher your stall speed. So we want to keep it at 30 degrees. The other thing is this, airspeed management in the pattern is pretty critical. Uh, so you never want to
to get let it get low. That's why I wanted you to do those songs because you get real used to listening to the airplane and uh, you memorize a certain sound for a certain speed. And when you memorize that sound speed combination, you never have to look at your indicator again. You're doing great. Let's go a little bit farther out to your left here. There you go, perfect. Now, what we're going to do here today is we're going to land on our short runway. Our long runway is right over here. You can see it goes from the, uh, that road all the way to I-4. Hey, it's kind of hard to see. But the short runway that we're going to land on is the same one we took off from. You can see the wind drift on the water out there. It's yep. just about right down the runway. So let's make a shallow right-hand turn, and we'll start heading on out to that lake. And put your left hand on that throttle. I'm going to have you uh, operate that as well. Let's bring the power back to about 1,500 RPM. There you go. Good. And we'll roll the wings back lower here. Outstanding. Your airspeed's right on the money. 75 to 80. It's always better to air too quick than going too fast and too slow. Now, yeah, I can smell some, uh, something has a fire burning because I can smell some uh, smoke from a fire down below. Let's go ahead and bring the power back a little bit more. How about 1,300 RPM? Do you see your runway down there now? Uh, it's hard to see the grass, but it goes from this lake to the other lake. Bring okay, the power back some more. You'll see it when we get a little closer. There you go. I see it now. Come on back some more. We're a little high out here. Perfect. All right, so there's your runway. This is what we call our left base. I want you to get up here a little bit further. We're going to make uh, our, our final. So we'll make a left-hand turn to the final. Let's try that. We'll start doing that now. Beautiful. Now, there's those little white runway markers you can see. Running on up. When you shoot a little bit higher than normal approach, that, that's actually a good thing because uh, you can actually lower the nose and see the runway. If you drag it in with a lot of power, the whole runway will disappear. Bring that nose up just slightly. There you go. Now listen to the airplane. Now, I, I want you to stay with me. Now make sure your heels are on the floorboards. Now listen yep. to it. Just like that stall that you did, you, you, we did, did the same thing. Basically, you bring the nose on up until it stalls. Pretty simple. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. Now, half an hour ago, we talked about the uh, taxiing characteristics. Right. Uh, you have the airplane. She's yours. I want you to add a little power, and then uh, we want to do those S turns, and we're basically looking for wildlife. But here's our main runway, and then we'll make a left-hand turn. Watch that little runway marker off your left there. There you go. And here we'll go left. handles on the ground a lot better than a Cessna, too. Yeah. <laughs> and you're never, ever in a hurry here. So we'll just keep it nice and slow. Well, you'll never forget today. What a beautiful oh, day to fly, too. This was worth every penny. And then some. Well, I've got this little video here, here for you, which is kind of a neat thing, because you can relive your flight. We, uh, We'll make a right-hand turn, we'll head over towards that brown airplane there. Doesn't look like there's anybody out on the ramp, so the ramp is ours. Just have to make sure we don't hit any uh, object over here. You're doing good. Let's go a little bit more to your right, just a little tiny bit. There's a little fit now, we'll go straight. And back to the left, hard to the left, and go straight. And let's go all the way to the right, as far as it goes, all the way. Kind of punch on that little break there. She comes right around. Now to shut this thing down, uh, go ahead and bring that mixture control, that little red ball. Yep. Pull that all the way back to lean. Take one more deep whiff, you'll smell some exhaust fumes. And that completes your flight. Great job. Outstanding.